Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in Rachel Crowther's delightful satire, Susan and God. It stars Walter Pigeon as Barry Trexel, Betty Davis as Susan, his wife, and Paula Winslow as Irene. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Susan and God. Susan and Barry Trexel are married, which of course is not original, and they don't get along, which is not exactly a novelty, and they have lots of friends, which is understandable, and their friends have opinions, which are to the point. Oh, Susan and Barry ought to be divorced. I think their existence is absurd. I wonder, does Barry drink because Susan's tired of him, or is Susan tired of him because he drinks? I hear he's adorable when he's sober and impossible when he's drunk. Any woman would get tired of that. Susan gets tired of everything. She changes her mind as often as her clothes. Uh, Susan doesn't change her mind. She changes her emotions. Well, one thing, I simply won't have them in my home together. I simply won't. But, Irene, Barry's been phoning every hour to see if Susan has arrived. She's due from New York today, isn't she? And didn't she cable you from the boat, Irene? Didn't she say she was coming up here to the country? Man, Aura, you don't know Susan. She's just as apt to show up in Kansas or Timbuktu or... Irene! Irene! Or here. You darlings, you darlings, you darlings. This is too wonderful. It is, it is, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad to see you, dear. Oh, I'm delighted to be here. I want to kiss you all. Irene and Stubby and... Do I know you? Does it make any difference? Susan, this is Clyde Rochester, the actor. He came up with Stubby and Leonora. Leonora? I'm Leonora, Stubby's wife. His new wife, of course, his first wife. And he was such a bachelor. I can quite see how you did it, Leonora. She's marvelous, Stubby. Irene, darling, it's so heavenly to be back. You look simply wonderful. You too. You look the way we're supposed to look when we come from Paris, only nobody ever does. Do you like me? Oh, how sweet, sweet, sweet. Sweet it is to be here. I should have, I should have stopped to see Blossom, but darling, how's your golf? Oh, my tea shot. And getting... Stubby, you must tell me, how does it feel to be married? Well, I feel... Oh, I just couldn't wait yeah. to get here. You know, I've had the most wonderful experience of my whole life. You always have them in Paris. Oh, not Paris, Irene. I've forgotten all that. I was referring to Lady Wiggum. Lady Wiggum? The most distinguished woman in England and the most gorgeously magnificent place in Kent, to say nothing of all the others, but that isn't it. Well, then, what is? It's her soul. It's developed to such a marvelous... For instance, the first night I was there, I didn't know anyone, and I was holding my chin as high as possible and trying to be as insulting to the English as they were to me. And then Lady Wiggum herself floated in, and we all loved each other in a minute. Well, what do you mean? Is she religious or something? Oh, no, it's much more than that. I mean, it's new and fresh and so so practical. That's why it appeals to me. What appeals to you? Why, her... It isn't hers, of course. It's anybody's. Everybody's. But she began the movement. Oh, Susan, if there's one thing I thought you'd never be guilty of, it's a movement. Oh, I know. That's why it's so wonderful. You wait, you'll see. I can't even talk about it yet. I just want to, to give, 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 give all I can to all of you. Well, give us what? That's what the movement is. It's just... It's just love, love, love for other people, not for yourself. Oh, no dogma or anything hard to believe. Just love and wanting to give and give. I mean, how are the dogs? Oh, just fine. The new litter is simply... Oh, it's such an honor meeting you, Mr. Rochester. Uh, How's Barry, Susan? Uh, I do hope he's all right. I hope so. Have any of you seen him lately? I saw him last week. Well, I didn't cable him to meet me at the boat for fear he'd be... Oh, you know, but he is sweet. Well, then, shouldn't your movement start at home? I mean, if you really want to give... Irene, darling, you don't understand. One must be ready to receive. One must purify one's soul, confess. Come along, darling, I have something for you. You think my soul is pure enough? Ah, <laughs> darling, this isn't for your soul. Well, what then? From Paris, the most ravishing panties you ever saw. <laughs> well, what do you think of her, Leonora? Susan? I don't know, Clyde. Of course, we two belong to the stage, you and I. I belong to the stage. You did belong until you were married. Which brings me to something... Clyde, we were talking with Susan. We belong to the stage. We used to characters. But Susan, no author could have created her. She, she... A funny thing. Why should Irene be so scared to have both Susan and Barry here together? I asked Debbie that. He thinks Irene's secretly in love with Barry. Oh, that's pretty tough for her. And I know just how she... I say, uh, anyone there? Who's that? I don't know. I've never seen him before. Tall, good-looking. You think he could be... Very tricked, so. And he'll ask for Susan. And Irene doesn't want them here together. Clyde, I'm going... By the way, Leonora, you get... 
Yeah, fine thing, leaving me to hold the bag. Uh, I beg your pardon. Uh, is is Irene, uh, uh, Mrs. Burroughs, about? Well, not at the moment. She went up the chain. Uh, I see. Well, Dad, did you ask about Mother? Uh, I, I was just about to. Can you tell me, sir, has Mrs. Trexel arrived? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a stranger here myself. Oh, uh, one of those, huh? I'm uh, Barry Trexel. My wife is expected. Yes. And this is my daughter, Blossom. How do you do? My name is Clyde Rochester. Oh, the, the actor. I, I say, you know, you've given me many a laugh. Oh, thanks. Uh, can I give you a little something now? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, you'd rather have information than a drink. Well, it's, uh, it's about 50-50. <laughs> you know. Then I'll try to find someone who knows something. Excuse me. Thanks. Dad, maybe Mother did go on to school for me. Maybe I shouldn't have come away. But I thought that was what you wanted to do, darling. Well, school was closing. All the other girls were leaving. I didn't want them to think I hadn't any place to go. I suppose that sounds silly to you. No, not at all. We all like to have some place to go. At least we like people to think we have. That's almost more important than uh, going, isn't it? Huh? Yes, it is. When you didn't come to the closing exercises, I said you were sick, or, or they'd have thought I didn't have anyone to come. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to... Uh, uh, look here. If your mother hasn't arrived yet, Irene can put you up tonight, and I'll go back to town. You want to go back because you're stuck with me? Oh, no, no, not at all. I, it, 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 it's very nice to be with you. If, if you don't mind, I don't. We've been together four hours. You're bored to death. Oh, now, nonsense. Uh, the, the, the four hours isn't very long. I, I mean, look, see here, I've got a real idea. Suppose you and I go over to our place tonight. It isn't far. And the gardener and his wife are there. They might take us in. You know, they seem like very kind people. Oh, could we? Could we, Dad? Well, why not? Oh, that would be wonderful. I'd rather be there than any place in the world. If we could just all be there for a while, I won't even mind going to camp. Uh, but I, I thought you liked camp. I hate it. I hate what? the camp. Why can't we all be together sometime? Why can't we be some sort of a family like other people? Why can't we? Blossom, I, I didn't know you felt this way about it. Perhaps if I... I beg pardon, sir. Huh? Mrs. Burroughs says she's extremely sorry not to see you, but she's in the bath. Oh, well, I'm sorry not to see her. Uh, and uh, Mrs. Trexel, is she also in the bath? Madame says Mrs. Trexel is expected tomorrow. Huh. Dad, then she did go to the school. Uh, I don't think so, my dear. Oh, maybe she's had an accident or something. Dad, aren't you worried? No, not a bit. If Susan is lying in a ditch somewhere, you may be sure she picked it in advance. And it's a perfectly good ditch. Come along, my dear. Let's go home. Clyde, may I sit down and listen? If you're very quiet. Please, Clyde, I'm seeking refuge. From what? From Mrs. Trexel, Susan. She's been working on my soul all through dinner. Oh? Hasn't got you worried, has she? I don't know. Clyde, I'm so bored. So awfully bored. Who isn't? I know I'm not fair to Stubby. I'm not living up to what he expected. And Well, I haven't got the guts to chuck it and go back to the stage. It's a tough life, the stage. No use kidding yourself about it. I know. Stubby never believed I wanted to go back to that. You think it was a man, you or someone else? Well, since it isn't me, I hope you stick this out. Please don't be noble. I know one thing, Leonora. I won't do this again. It's torment hanging around, seeing you married to somebody else. I didn't know it would be quite so... Oh, Mrs. Traxel. These awful moments when we know we've come in at the wrong time. But it would be still worse to go out again, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm sure you don't ever come in at the wrong time for anyone. How enchanting of you. I don't wonder it has happened. What's happened? Well, I don't know whether you can stand my honesty or not. Everyone at Lady Wiggum's was so beautifully honest, we... Didn't mind having our worst faults told to us. Only sometimes it's not upsetting. If you're looking for sin, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Clyde isn't my sweetheart. But you're in love with her, Clyde. You call that a sin? Oh, it needn't be. You could exalt your love and make it marvelous. But first you have to confess it openly. How can I confess it when everybody's always known it? Clyde, that's beautiful. Now, if you'd only say that to Stubby, he wouldn't be afraid of it. Hey, what the... Why the big saddle? Stubby. Clyde has just said something brave and beautiful. Mrs. Trexel, you're kidding. I... Now, now, don't fall down, Clyde. You see, when we run away from things, they become dangerous. What dangerous? Irene, you should have heard Clyde. He just said... Don't listen, Irene. He's trying to make fools of us. Susan, I'd like to hear what he said. Well, Stubby, he said it so honestly. 
Of course, I'm in love with Leonora. All the world has always known it. What? My wife? Stubby, Stubby, be big. Take him by the hand and tell him you trust him. Oh, take him by the feet of the pants and throw him out. Stubby, Stubby, dear heart, look at me. Let me say this to you. You've got depth, fine spiritual depths in your nature that you don't know anything about. Oh, Susan, will you please leave our spiritual depths alone for this weekend? I can't. I can't, Irene. I'd be falling down. Clyde, this is your chance. What do you want me to do? Confess, purge your soul, fill your secrets on the wind. What the... Remember, no matter what we are or what we do, if we're sorry, really, and really and honestly want his help, we can be made over. Do you believe that, Susan? Oh, finally. Oh, 